Hello, YouTubes. Hello, Doug and everybody else at the Adler. Shout out to uh, Eleni and Ernie and everyone else who enjoys looking at the moon. I've been putting a lot of time and energy into my large-scale spherical data pre-processing and rendering mechanisms. Applying it now to a lot of data coming back from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in orbit around the moon. Let's take a look at that. For starters, here's the moon. The basic data set that you're looking at here is the wide angle camera global mosaic. It's, uh, I pieced it together from several mosaics actually. The six orthogonal views and the two polar views, I sort of seamlessly blended them together in order to produce one uh, sort of consistent image crossing the, uh, covering the entire moon. And if we zoom all the way in here, you can see what is uh, the effective resolution of it. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Here you're seeing some pixels. I'm specifically not filtering this because I, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted the, si the scale of the pixels to be obvious in this demonstration so that we can see how much data there is here and we can compare and contrast different things. Uh, so there's that data. Now what makes this really kind of interesting is that it's not just applied to a sphere, it's applied to a height map. This is the LOLA height map, actually, the Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter at its highest resolution. That's 1,024 uh, pixels per degree. That's a lot of data. It's, it's actually um, 68 gigapixels of data, and I've got it all loaded here simultaneously. We can browse around. Browse that. Looks real nice. Together, WAC with its uh, built-in shading and lighting and LOLA with its terrain gives us a really a strikingly realistic image of the moon. You can browse around. It's really nice. Um, I have one of the narrow angle camera, two actually, of the narrow angle camera regions of interest overlaid on top of this. So let me zoom in on one of them here. This is the Apollo 16 region of interest. You can see it there kind of coming into view. Over here you can see the low-res pixels of WAC and the high-res pixels of NAC. We're centered on the landing site of Apollo 16. Uh, and there it is right there. That's the, uh, the lunar lander. This is where the lunar rover was parked. You see a lot of footprints walking around here. Here's some experiments that they set up. Actually, I can change the contrast a little bit here. Let me see if I can make this look a little better. Ah, there we go. Uh, so now you can see things a little better. Here's some rover tracks right here. Here they did some donuts in the rover. They walked around. Um, and actually, incredibly, um, today is April 21st, 2012. It's about, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And 40 years ago right now, these guys were making these tracks. That's a long time ago. But there's a lot of beauty here. And yeah, we, we, we can take a look around. We can sort of see what, what was the view from this area. We can look up. Some mountains in the distance, some craters. Looking around the horizon, there's a there's a large mountain over there. That's Smoky Mountain. Big white impact over there. These tracks go all over the place. Let me see if I can follow one of them here. So right here, if you zoom in real close, there's, you sort of see it. I think I can make it clearer. Yeah, okay. By enhancing the contrast even more, we can sort of see, uh, it goes here, 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 here. Oh, uh, yep, up here. Moves here. Here, they're dinking along here. Zoom. Oh, down below this crater. Yep, all right, down here, right here. Here's more tracks. Goes all the way over here into this transition in the data. They drove a long way, but you know what? That was only the first day. Let me go back to the normal view here. They really got a lot of mileage out of that rover. Um, but yeah, that, was the, ooh, that was the first day. On the second day, actually, they, they, they went all the way over there. They climbed that mountain, drove all the way over there. The, the tracks are pretty indistinct, though. I've kind of looked for them, but they're hard to find. And let me tell you, once you, you start staring at the moon looking for rover tracks, everything starts to look like rover tracks. Some of these tracks right here, they kind of go off in this direction. They did that on the third day. They headed off toward the north. Let's take a look at where they went. Here's a big crater. 
taking it along. There's some um, really nice rocks right around here. Very cool looking stuff. They eventually all made it all the way to this huge impact crater here. Well, it's not huge as such, it's just incredibly deep. So deep, in fact, that they didn't dare walk up to it and see the bottom for fear of falling in. Look at all those rocks and boulders on the bottom of there. It's gorgeous. And they did spend some time with this crater on the third day. In particular, they examined this rock. This is um, house rock. And there's a there's a nice video. They, they parked the rover like way down here somewhere. And there's a nice video of, it looks like them sort of standing next to a rock that's not so big. And then they start walking forward toward, and on the moon there's no atmosphere, so you can't really tell how far away things are. They keep walking, they keep walking, they keep walking. By the time they actually get there, there are these tiny little guys next to this big, big rock. And Charlie Duke, one of the astronauts, says, Look at the size of that rock! We can see. So that's a nice segue. Actually, let me zoom out of this data set here and go to another place in time, another big rock. The other NAC ROI that I have loaded is at the center of Tycho Crater. Tycho Crater is easy to find. There it is. Very prominent, very young feature on the moon. Oh, by the way, I should mention that last ROI, that was uh, 17 gigapixels of information. This is... Um, 18 gigapixels of information. So all told, there's a vast quantity of information here. 68 gigapixels of height map, 7 gigapixels of low resolution color map, 7 gigapixels of high res over there, and another 18 gigapixels over here. So let's zoom in on this one. So there's been a lot of sort of volcanic activity uh, in, in Tycho Crater here. It got hit really hard about 110 million years ago, and the surface is absolutely strewn with these tiny boulders. And again, if I zoom all the way in so you can see the pixels here, each of these pixels is half a meter across. So these smallest rocks that you can see, these are two or three meters across. And they are everywhere. Now, taking a look at the mountain itself, it too is covered with boulders. And in particular, there is one interesting boulder right here. This guy, right on the peak of the Tycho Center Mount. Would you look at the size of that rock? Got a good view. So this rock has been in the news in this last year. Um, question is, how did it get there? It's about 100 meters across, and it's sitting at the top of a mountain. It's a piece of the crust. Well, scientists are saying that it's evidence of recent volcanism on the moon because Tycho Crater is so uh, relatively young, only 100 million years old. It's evidence that there has been active volcanism within that time span. This is a really dynamic area of the moon. Look at all these streaks from uh, landslides, rocks falling down. It's amazing. There's one, uh, there's a transition in the data set here, multiple different passes of the knack. There's one little rock right around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find him. Oh, there he is. This guy right here, he went for a ride. He started out all the way up here. Looks like he made a little jump and a little jump. You know, it's funny, you can see a rock rolling down a hill like that, but that could have happened 10 million years ago, for all anybody knows. Beautiful stuff. Okay, and now for something completely different. <clears throat> so with this imagery, the light of the sun and the shadows that it casts are, are built into the photographs. Uh, and what that means is the moon is full everywhere all of the time, which is fine when you're close up, but it looks a little weird from far away. So 
To do things differently, let me load up a couple of different data sets. Again, the moon. But this time, I can move the sun around. What's different here is that instead of uh, just applying a, a photograph, an actual you know, textured photograph of the moon, uh, there's a color map which sort of looks like the moon but is extremely low resolution. The fine resolution is actually coming from a normal map derived from the height map. So this is um, a different height map. This is GLD, the Global Lunar DTM. Uh, it's a 100 uh, meter per pixel data set. And uh, what's nice about it is it was, it was captured. It's much smoother. And I'll actually show this in a minute. It was captured using WAC imagery and stereoscopic analysis of that. Well, given that height map, I can, for any point on the surface, determine which direction is that surface pointing. And then when I move the sun around, I can re-illuminate that point from wherever that sun is. And so that means I'm no longer limited by what we see in the photographs. Now it's Shackleton Crater. That's the South Pole. Well, notice it's illuminated. And um, well, if I go to the, um, the WAC, it's dark down here because the sun doesn't shine. You can never see the bottom of Shackleton Crater. But if you're doing the re-illumination yourself, you can. In fact, you can just put the sun high in the sky, move it around as you like. OK, in the last section, I mentioned a big difference between LOLA and GLD, two different height maps of the moon that were collected in different ways. And this visualization will allow us to sort of see that difference. Here we see shaded relief, just like, uh, just like in the last demo where we can move the sun around. But instead of applying a color map of the moon, we're actually coloring it by height. So blue is a deep area and red is, is a tall mountain. I'm going to zoom in now to a familiar location, Tycho Crater. We just took a very, very close up look at Tycho Crater with that nice NAC data. Um, and whoops, not that. And without that high-res imagery, you lose a little something. It uh, looks like a, a sad little pipsqueak of a mountain now. Well, on the left, we have GLD, which was constructed from uh, stereo pairs of the wide-angle camera. On the right, we have LOLA, which is laser altimetry. Now, there's obviously a big difference, a difference in character here. You see these vertical lines. These lines run north and south, and these are the actual ground traces of the satellite. It fires a laser, which has an extremely narrow field of view, at the moon and measures the time taken to bounce back. Well, actually, it fires five lasers, but still a very, very narrow field of view. And so the data coverage of LOLA is really very slight, especially toward the equator. Now, fortunately, in LOLA, these ground traces get so close together that it no longer matters that they're far apart. And therefore, LOLA data at the poles is good and at the equator is bad. Meanwhile, uh, GLD data, which is based on WAC, is good at the equator but bad at the poles because it's unilluminated. And so what you're actually seeing here on the left, well, that's just LOLA. There is no GLD near the poles, so I took LOLA data and I... I filled in the gaps, and somewhere around here there's a transition. It's actually really rather hard to find. Well, you've just been shown a total of 185 gigapixels of lunar data between the, uh, the NAC ROIs, the WAC height map, the LOLA height map, the normal maps, and Clementine, a little bit of that that you saw. All being rendered in real time on a, at a 1080p on a off-the-shelf PC. There's effectively no limit to the uh, quantity of data that can be shown here since it's all demand paged as you go along. The uh, geometry is adaptively tiled in order to uh, fit whatever you're looking at. The resolution at which it's rendered is, is not limited because uh, it's a parallel render. It's limited only by the uh, the number of machines and the number of displays that you want to run. So hopefully over the course of this summer this technology will be integrated into a new moon wall exhibit. That'd be nice. Then uh, everybody can share in this. Everyone can visit the, uh, visit the Adler and see the moon in a new way.